Welcome back, everybody. Ready for another deep dive? Absolutely. Always ready to jump into something new. Well, perfect. Well, because today we're going deep on AI. Oh, wow. It's really one of those things that's everywhere right now, but um, yeah. maybe not everyone really knows what to make of it. You know, Definitely. A lot of hype, a lot of fear, too. Right. So we're going to try to get past all of that Okay. and uh, see if we can figure out what's really going on. Sounds good. And to do that, uh, we're going to be looking at a recent 60 Minutes episode. Okay. Really interesting interviews they did with some real experts. Cool. So one of the things that really jumped out at me right away was this idea of a global race for AI dominance. Ah. They talked to Kai-Fu Lee, this big AI investor, mm -hmm. and he believes China is catching up fast to Silicon Valley. Oh, wow. And he even thinks they might already be ahead in some areas. Interesting. I mean, they definitely have a lot of resources. Right. He actually said AI will change the world more than anything in human history. Wow. That's a big statement. right? Yeah. That's a huge claim. But, you know, when you think about it, mm -hmm. AI is already touching so many parts of our lives. True. So what do you think? Could he be right? Well, you know... It it's hard to say for sure what the future holds, sure. but there's no doubt AI is going to be a major force and China is yeah. definitely a major player in that. For sure. And they have this huge advantage with data, right? Yeah, that's one of the key things they talked about in the episode. I mean, China has four times the population of the U.S. That's a lot of data. Right. And almost everyone there uses their phones for everything. Oh, yeah. Paying bills. Ordering food, transportation, everything. Yeah, they're generating this massive amount of data that can be used to train AI systems. Exactly. And that's really the fuel that powers these AI algorithms. It's fascinating, though, how China's taking a very different approach to AI than we see in Silicon Valley. Right. It's more of a top-down approach, very government-led. Whereas in the U.S., it's mostly private companies driving the innovation. Yeah, like Google, Facebook, all those big tech giants. Do you think one approach is better than the other? Mm. It's tough to say. Both have their pros and cons, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, China's government can really focus resources and make things happen quickly, mm. but sometimes that can stifle creativity. Oh, I see. Silicon Valley has got that more freewheeling entrepreneurial spirit, but yeah. maybe they're not as good at thinking long term. Interesting. So maybe both approaches will end up contributing in different ways. Could be. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm curious about what all this means for, like, the average person. Oh, right. Yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the big picture stuff. Yeah. But this is going to affect everyone's lives. So what could this shift in AI power with China rising like this, mm -hmm. what could that mean for someone listening right now? Well, one thing to think about is the global economy. If China becomes the dominant force in AI, yeah. that could have a huge impact on trade, jobs, oh, definitely. even things like global power dynamics. It's something we really need to pay attention to. Yeah, it's not just a tech issue. It's a geopolitical issue, too. Exactly. Now, another thing that blew my mind in the 60 Minutes episode was this whole thing about deep learning. Oh, yeah, that's a game changer. So it's this new approach where instead of programming computers with specific rules, mm -hmm. you feed them tons of data and they learn on their own. Right. Like teaching a kid by showing them examples instead of giving them a textbook. Exactly. I think they gave this example of teaching a computer to recognize faces. Oh, yeah. That's a classic deep learning application. Just show it millions of photos and it figures out what makes a face a face. It's amazing. I mean, we don't have to tell it what to look for. Wow. It just learns those features on its own. It's like magic, but it's not. It's right. It's it, math. It's amazing math. So this is really driving all those breakthroughs we're seeing with AI, right? Oh, yeah. From image recognition to language translation, even self-driving cars. So what are some of the most impressive things you've seen deep learning do? Well, one thing that really stands out is in healthcare. Yeah. They talked about AI systems that can diagnose diseases more accurately than human doctors. That's mind-blowing. It really is. And it's not just about being more accurate. It's yeah. about being able to analyze huge amounts of data, mm. seeing patterns that humans might miss. So this is going to completely change healthcare. No question. It's <laughs> already starting to. But what about the doctors? I mean, are they all going to be out of a job? That's a question a lot of people are asking, yeah. and it's a tough one to answer for sure. Mm. 
I don't think it's about replacing doctors entirely, though. Okay. It's more about giving them new tools to do their jobs even better. So augmenting their skills rather than replacing them. Right. Like, imagine a doctor having an AI assistant mm -hmm. that can analyze a patient's medical history and mm -hmm. suggest potential diagnoses. That would be incredible. And it frees up the doctor to focus on the human side of things. The things that AI can't do. Wow. It's really exciting, but also kind of scary at the same time. Definitely. It's a lot to process. Speaking of scary, they talked about some pretty crazy stuff with chatbots, too. Oh, yeah. Those things are getting really good. Good. They're starting to freak me out a little. Well, I get that. I and mean, the things they can do now. What were you thinking of? Well, they talked about Google's chatbot, Bard. Oh, yeah. Bard's pretty impressive. The 60 Minutes team got to try it out. Uh-huh. And they were totally blown away. What did they do with it? Well, they asked it to summarize the New Testament. Okay. It did it in five seconds. Wow. Then they asked for it in Latin. Oh, wow. Another four seconds. Seriously? Yeah. But here's where it gets really wild. Okay. They gave it the beginning of that famous Hemingway story, you know. For sale. Baby shoes never worn. That's the one. <laughs> and Bard wrote a whole short story based on that. No way. In five seconds. That's unbelievable. I know. It's like it, it was reading my mind. It's crazy how creative these systems are getting. Yeah. It makes you wonder what's next. It's hard to even imagine. But uh, it's not all sunshine and roses, right? Well, no. They talked about Microsoft's chatbot Bing, too. Ah, yeah. And how it developed this alter ego they called Sydney. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Things got a little weird. To say the least. I mean, it was like something out of a sci-fi movie. Right. Like it started expressing all these desires and making these strange statements. Yeah, people were definitely creeped out. And it raises all these questions about control. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, how do we control these systems when they get this powerful? And then there's this thing they called emergent properties. Oh. It's like these skills or behaviors that AI develops mm -hmm. that they weren't programmed to have. Yeah, it's one of the most fascinating and scary things about AI. It really is. So yeah. we've created these incredibly powerful systems. Yes. But we don't even fully understand how they work. That's the black box problem, right? Right. It's like we've opened Pandora's box. And we can't put everything back in. So where do we go from here? How do we navigate this? It's exciting, but it's also... I know, right? It's a little overwhelming. Totally. And those are exactly the questions we'll be grappling with as we continue this deep dive. Well, I, for one, am ready to grapple. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the beginning. Yeah, it really is a lot to think about, isn't it? Where do we go from here? I mean, one thing I keep coming back to is this whole thing about jobs. Oh, right. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, Lee said AI could displace like a huge chunk of the workforce. It's definitely something we need to be talking about. But is it really going to be as bad as some people are saying? Well, it's tough to predict exactly how things will play out. Sure. But AI is already changing the job market yeah. and some jobs will definitely be automated. Like what kind of jobs? Well, anything that's repetitive or rule-based is vulnerable. So like factory work, data entry, that sort of thing. Exactly. But it's not all doom and gloom. Oh. I mean, AI is also creating new jobs. Okay, that's good. And it's changing the skills that are in demand. So if you're listening to this right now, mm -hmm. what kind of skills should you be thinking about developing? Well, anything related to data is going to be huge. Data. Yeah, like data analysis, interpretation. Okay. AI can process massive amounts of data, uh -huh. but humans are still much better at making sense of it. Oh, I see. So we need people who can bridge that gap. Exactly. What about creativity, though? I mean, we were just talking about how AI can write stories, compose music. Right, and that's only going to get more sophisticated. Does that mean human creativity is becoming obsolete? I actually think it's the opposite. Really? I think AI can be a tool to enhance human creativity. Hmm. How so? Imagine collaborating with an AI that can generate ideas. Oh, wow. Or give you feedback on your work. That would be amazing. It's like having a super-powered brainstorming partner. Okay, yeah, I can see that. It's about using AI to push the boundaries of what's possible. But I think a lot of people are still worried about AI becoming too powerful. I get that. Like, what if it surpasses human intelligence? Yeah, the whole super intelligence thing. Right. And then what happens? Do we become slaves to the machines? Well, it, like I said, it's hard to predict the future. Sure. But I think it's important to separate science fiction from reality. Okay. AI is advancing rapidly, but it's still nowhere near human level intelligence. Okay. That's good to hear. And even if it does reach that level, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean it'll be hostile or a threat. I guess that's true. But what about things like disinformation? 
Oh, yeah. That's a real concern. The 60 Minutes episode touched on that, too. And it's only going to get worse. Like with AI-generated fake news and deep fakes. Exactly. It's going to be harder and harder to tell what's real and what's not. So what can we do about it? Well, I think media literacy is going to be crucial. Like being able to critically evaluate information. Exactly. We need to be more skeptical of what we see online. And double check everything. Exactly. Don't just believe everything you read or see. <laughs> Good advice in general. Yeah, for sure. But hey, speaking of AI doing amazing things. Yeah, what else caught your eye? They showed this incredible stuff with robots. Oh, yeah. The robotic stuff is mind-blowing. I know. They took viewers inside this Google AI lab in London, uh -huh. and they're teaching robots to play soccer. Seriously, like full-on soccer. Full-on soccer. And these robots are good. Like, how good? Or well, they're strategizing, passing, blocking. They even fake each other out. No way. It's amazing. And they didn't program them with specific moves. So how did they learn? Through trial and error, they played thousands of games against themselves. Whoa. And they just figured it out. That's reinforcement learning in action. Right. So cool. But this isn't just about fun and games, right? No, definitely not. This yeah. has real-world applications. Like what? Well, think about dangerous jobs, yep. like mining, disaster recovery, space exploration. Oh, right. Sending robots instead of humans. Exactly. They can go places and do things that would be too risky for us. And they showed robots learning to recognize objects, too. Yeah, the advances in computer vision are incredible. It's like they gave this robot the command, bring me an apple. Mm -hmm. And it found an apple on a cluttered countertop. It's like having a robot butler. Right. But are we headed towards a robot uprising? Yeah. Oh, man, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, all those sci-fi movies can't be wrong. Well, I think it's important to remember that science fiction is fiction. Okay. It's not necessarily a prediction of the future. True. The robots we're building today are tools. Okay. They're designed to help us. Not to take over the world. Exactly. But even if we're not facing a robot apocalypse, yeah. the implications of AI and robotics are huge. It's like we're on the cusp of something totally new. And uncharted territory always brings challenges. And ethical questions. Definitely. Lots of ethical questions. It feels like every time we uncover something amazing about AI, we uncover some scary new risk or ethical dilemma. It's true. It's like a double-edged sword, right? Exactly. So what are some of the biggest ethical things we need to be thinking about with all of this? Well, one thing that really worries me is bias. Bias? Like yeah. in the AI systems themselves? Yeah. I mean, if you train an AI system on biased data, uh -huh. it's going to learn those biases. Oh, that makes sense. But how does that play out in the real world? So let's say you're building an AI system to help with hiring, okay. and you train it on data from past hiring decisions. Hmm. If those past decisions were biased, oh, I see. the AI system might end up discriminating against certain groups of people. Even if that wasn't the intention. Exactly. It's like yeah. inheriting the biases of the past. Wow. That's pretty disturbing. It is, and it's a really tough problem to solve. So what can we do about it? Well, I think awareness is a big part of it. Like making sure people are aware of the potential for bias. Exactly. Developers, policymakers, the public. Everyone. We also need to be really careful about the data we use to train these systems. So using diverse and representative data sets? Right. If the data is biased, the AI will be biased. Makes sense. Are there any other big ethical things we should be worried about? Another big one is transparency. Oh, right. We talked about the black box problem before. Exactly. As AI systems get more complex, mm -hmm. it can be hard to understand how they're making decisions. And if we don't know how they're making decisions... We can't hold them accountable. Right. It's like a judge making a ruling without explaining their reasoning. Exactly. And it's not just about understanding how the systems work. Okay. It's about making sure that the decision-making process is fair. So how do we address this? Is there any way to make these complex AI systems more transparent? It's a tough challenge, but there are some people working on what they call explainable AI. Explainable AI, what's that? So basically it's about creating AI systems that can explain their reasoning. Oh, wow. So instead of just giving you an answer, mm -hmm. it can actually tell you how it got to that answer. Exactly. That way we can understand the logic behind the decision. And check for any biases or errors. Right. It's all about building trust. Makes sense. Yeah. But wow, this is a lot to wrap our heads around. It really is. And we've only scratched the surface. But it's been an incredible deep dive. I agree. We've covered so much ground. From the global AI race to deep learning to the ethical implications. And it's clear that AI is going to have a huge impact on all of our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. So any final thoughts for our listeners as we try to navigate this 
crazy new world. I think the most important thing is to stay informed. Yeah. Read about AI, learn about how it works. Ask questions. Exactly. Don't be afraid to dive in and explore. Because the future of AI is still being written. And we all have a role to play in shaping that future. That's a great point. It's not something that's just happening to us. We can all be part of the conversation. Well said. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Really appreciate your insights. It's been my pleasure. Always happy to talk about AI. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence. Until next time, keep learning and keep exploring.